Cuckoo, hello, say hi. Still Who is here? Hello, hello. Marilyn, right? Little homestead? What? By the, okay, Marilyn. Hello, Marilyn. I'm terrible with names. Hello, Renal. I guess we're going to wait a little bit more. There's four of us here. Okay, so uh, first I want to say hi to all of you and thanks for coming. And I want to hear a little bit before me and Remy go on, a little bit about yourself. If you are a homesteader or if you dream about becoming a homesteader. And I want to hear a little bit about you and I'll highlight your comment. Hello, Ecocentric Homestead. Mama Homemade. I missed that. Hello, Madam Mama Homemade. Hey, she, you told me you couldn't come. Hello. Is anyone game enough to talk about their dreams or if they are homesteading? No? No one? Okay. okay what is okay. a homesteader? Is that a question for us? Is that, you want us to answer what is a homesteader? Is that what you want us to do? That's a pretty wide and vague answer. Okay, well a homesteader, I'm gonna answer as is, is basically someone that raise their food and grow their own food and you can, you can add livestock, you can you can talk about gardening, self-preserving your food. It's it's pretty large. What is a homesteader? What is it for you, Remy, a homesteader? Uh, for me, it's uh, living off the land, living off your property. Um, your friend there that was here the other day, uh, she has a French channel and she made an English one. She, she had a good definition of it and I saw it on her channel and I'm, I agree with what she was saying. She was saying something like... Uh, it's basically everything you can do on your property uh, to be as self-sustainable as possible. I mean, someone who just goes and cut uh, firewood for your for your house is a little bit part of homesteading. True, That's, true. And a garden. A thousand square feet garden. That's a big garden. What is your favorite thing to grow? Ecocentric homestead. Building a forest garden. I've seen that before. I think that, it's... Yeah, it's nice. A forest garden is basically you walk in the forest and you eat. Yeah. So you have fruits, you have vegetables, you have nuts. Well, depending where you are in the world, a food forest is very interesting. If you have a space for it, it's really interesting. And if you include permaculture into it, there's a well, whole bunch of different scenarios you can make. Well, usually a, f a food forest is by definition a permaculture like you have biodiversity everywhere yeah. uh, that is a excellent goal a hundred percent of your food i wish you good luck with that it is hard work but i'm sure you can get it get it done how big is your family ecocentric i'm curious i'm here with a family of seven and it's uh, my ultimate goal but well, we can't be we can't impossible. be a hundred percent self reliant on our land unless we have like employees help from the kids, <laughs> help from the kids and you homeschool and oh it's just oh well just you that's possible that's possible. But it one, is all you doing all the work. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, but one person to feed is easier than three, four, five, six, seven. Cause like when I go outside and I go gather green beans for dinner, I don't grab like just like a bushel. Like it has to be like a big bin of beans. We're the five of us. So it depends a thousand square feet for one person. He can do a lot. Thanks for sharing that. Anyone else want to share with us? Hello, honey badger homestead. This is the first time I see you here. Hello and welcome. 
if you want to talk about if you have a homestead, if you dream of a homestead, you can also share your story. And I will make sure to read it. Okay, so, oh, oh okay, thanks, that was you. Okay, thanks for sharing. The, um, I will start. Um, why I homestead, for my part, comes with a little story. Uh, my story actually dates back from, what was the question again? Um, um, Marilyn, the question was, if you dream of being a homesteader or if you have a homestead, and if you want to talk about it. And why? And why? Um, okay, so my story started in 2011, and it kind of is a work in progress story. It's like a real journey. I just gave birth to my firstborn, my daughter. So my husband and I were back home about, I would say, less than a month after giving birth. So he started getting sick. Uh, he he had so much cramps. Uh, his stomach was swollen. He went to the doctors and obviously the C word came out. He had to do biopsy. The whole process came back negative. And after a while, we figured out that he had a infection to his large colon, which is called uh, la C difficile. And you can get treatment for it, but it's only you're only getting the treatments for the symptom. The bacteria still stays inside of you. And after balloting it for about... I would say six months, he was really discouraged. So we decided to go natural way and we found out that he was intolerant to corn. And I don't know if you bake from scratch or cook from scratch, corn is in everything. So I had to start learning how to cook, how to bake everything from scratch. Being home after giving birth for 50 weeks, I was able to do it. But then when I went back to work, uh, it became complicated. And then baby number two arrived and I was juggling uh, daycare. I was struggling uh, baking, cooking and all that. Full like It was a full time job just to manage all of that. And then oops happened. I got the announcement that I was pregnant with baby number three. And then we started calculating how we're going to do this. Like financially, how was I going to go back to work, cook, bake, uh, school, daycare, and everything. And we just came to the solution that I would stay home. Staying home means no income for us. And our finances were very tough. My salary had to be counted. And we had to figure out how. I was able to stay home and I don't remember exactly what I searched on YouTube that night, but I found a, a, um, a YouTube channel. A lot of you guys know it, Art and Brie. Art and Brie uh, started a YouTube channel about at the same time I was questioning myself of how I was able to stay home. And it was this intro video of why he was starting a YouTube channel and I follow along and I've found other channel like Justin Rhodes uh, so the land, living tradition, uh, living tradition, homestead roots and refuge farm. And I figured for me to stay home, I had to become a homesteader because my husband needed it in his diet. And it was just, it was like a one plus one plus one event journey. And it got me to, to the point of about five years ago that we decided to uh, buy a house, buy a small land and start homesteading. And then it kind of evolved. My, my situation, my husband's health. And then when I started tasting my own food that I was, it was still a small it's garden. Yeah, it's the best. But like, I didn't know that because like I was always gardening on a small scale. But then when I started tasting my tomatoes, my cucumbers, my peppers, I started to see that the grocery store food that we were eating was not what they were supposed to taste like. They're supposed to taste much more delicious. And then the why became really clear. I want the best nutrients for my kids, the best ingredients for my husband to make sure that his um, infection or I would say echoes of the infection stays at bay because seeing my husband with cramps, bloated, um, with the worst case of stomach pain, it kind of makes you feel powerless. So 
it, it, it just, it was a literal journey of just discovering what I could grow in my zone and it became a passion. I wanted to grow more and more every year. And by growing more and more every year, I hit some, some walls. I've met some people around the, along the way. And then I found the passion of sharing it. And that kind of brought me full circle to my fifth year homesteading of deciding that I would officially share as much as I can, all the knowledge that I've gathered with YouTube land and other platforms. I've missed your comments. I am so sorry. I'm going to go read them. Uh, did you, did I miss something? Hello, Serge. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, that's a good reason. I am a homesteading because I'm an addict to gardening. <laughs> I guess you're an addict of collecting seeds at the same time. Um, hello, Nor I'm going to say the word, I'm going to say it, Northern, no, Northern Berlin Land, Acres, hello, I'm so sorry I'm massacring your name. Northern Berlin. Yes, I'm going to say it one day. They say <laughs> the current system produces healthy food, but they ignore the thousands of people that overcomes health issues by growing there. It's true, that's true. That's very true. Uh... <clears throat> Hello, da -da, da -da -da. Hi, Boreal Homesteading. Hello, Danielle. I think I caught up with all the comments. Not really. I was born and raised in a garden center. That's fun. That's fun. That must have been fun to play in dirt and seeds and the flowers. Uh, the little homestead by the beach knows the weather in Quebec. We got hit by our first big snowstorm of the year. Light, well, I, I don't have snow this year. We have snow and then it rains and then it snows and then it rains. It gets warm. It's like cold. Today it's three degrees Celsius and in two days it's supposed to be minus 30 something. Oh, we lost you to me. Remy, I guess, is going to join us back. Probably has in internet connection problems. Can you tell me if you still hear me? Can anyone tell me if they still hear me? <clears throat> Remy is back. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. I, we I lost you. To browse between the, the stream and uh, the YouTube because I have to be on YouTube to be able to write all the comments and read all the stuff. Yeah. And then you hit the wrong button. <laughs> Oops. I'm back. I'm back. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, I was talking and then, boop, you're gone. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, we are near you. That's the way our weather seems to. Yeah. The weather is weird this year. Hey, Nova Scotia person. Honey Badger's homestead. My neighbor. Perfect. Well, our provinces are pretty big, so it's a close, far neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can start by sharing your why. Um, I, I think it pretty much comes to the same point for everyone, and you said it a couple of times. It's all about health, like to eat healthier. Um. I was telling you earlier off, offline, um, and I keep saying the same thing to all my friends. A couple of years back, if you go 10 years ago, you would have asked me well, like, to eat organic, have a garden. I would have called you crazy. Like, If you told me I was going to do this in 10 years or in the near future, I mean, I couldn't see it happening. To me, it was just, you only have one life to live. Why worry about what's in your food? You're going to die at some point anyway. But I realized growing up that the food is so much better in every different way. Like if I eat, let's just take chicken, for example. I eat a chicken from the store, I'll spend the night in bed. So I don't enjoy life. Might as well raise the animal, care for the animal, have some fun by doing it. 
then at some point, you know, I'll have healthy food. Uh, to me, it's that's how it started. It's all it's all about being able to to do something for your family, at the same time doing something for, for like for my, it was for myself basically when I started. I used to garden when I was a kid with my grandmother, but I mean, we would go there and eat some carrots fresh out of the garden and cucumbers and stuff like that. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't intense or it wasn't with the goal of saving money or growing food. It was just like more of a hobby and that's okay. I mean, if people do it for a hobby, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, um, if you just go and eat 10% of your food from your garden, that's 10% of the food that you're going to eat that's healthier than what you can buy at the store. So every little bit counts. So to me, I guess, once again, to conclude, it's it just, it's all about being healthy, all about eating uh, healthier. And I mean, I've made so much friends in the last two years by doing this, uh, the YouTube, the the, the garden, uh, sells, uh, he's been uh, talking about uh, building a barn and I know he's there. That's what he said earlier. Um, I mean, that's the goal that we have for our homestead. If I can't sell my house, I know that I have a place there that I can call somewhat home, you know, where I can grow my food there. I can grow my vegetables here in my backyard and I can grow my animals there with cells. So you don't have to, to have a big property to grow your own food. Just make a good community and, you know, do it together if you, if you have to. True. Some communities have gardens. I don't particularly have one in my uh, in my city, but some cities around Quebec does have community garden, and it gives you the bonus of the community, <laughs> of talking to people and yeah. exchanging. You learn. <clears throat> yes. You learn a lot more. I find. Yes. Well, I you can find a lot of videos here on YouTube trainings, but there's no better training than an actual gardener or farmer that talks to you about his story and find out why he does something and then you turn around and add your flavor to it and make it your own in a way uh did i i do it to feed yes 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 i do it to feed with good food and pass down the knowledge yeah that's something i forgot to say i totally agree with you another reason why i do this is i would say at least two three generations lost the knowledge of growing food or anything around the homestead and us we are learning it uh, from our mistakes and I wish that I can show the future generation and inspire the future generation to actually get their hands dirty and go outside and breathe the fresh air and grow even if it's just herbs on a, in, like in a container on their balcony just like do something that is different like we were taught I can remember when I was in school and they were teaching us about what our life should be as adults our life should be a corporate world, work, 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 eight to five uh, on a desk, uh, you, like everything. Making the big money. Yeah, like the big American, the big fat American dream. And that, like in debt, credit cards, like you need the big house, the two cars and uh, the restaurants and the soirees and all of that. I want to teach something different to my kids. And that like mentality is still pretty much there in people's yeah. head because it's all about like, uh, impressing people, I guess, like like uh, you said, yeah. to have the big house. If you don't have a big house, if the kids don't go to school with fancy clothes, yeah, I mean, they get bullied. It's, it's, yeah. It doesn't make sense. I'm not saying the lifestyle is wrong, because if you if you believe in that lifestyle, that's that's yeah. up to you. But I'm saying I don't. I want to show my kids that there is option B. There's another like, way. There's another way. It's hard work for sure. Uh, when my season starts. Uh, Probably it would be less hectic if my kids were older, but my day starts at 7 and sometimes at 9, 10, 11, I'm still counting at night. I'm still dehydrating or I'm still cutting some vegetables or I'm working on something. So the days are very, very long and it's a lot of work. But during the winter, I would say October, yeah, September, mid-September till... March. It's like down period. And I have time to recuperate, resource myself, 
dream, look at seed catalogs, talk to other gardeners, improve my situation and stuff like that. And, and then it starts picking up slowly. And then in July, it just gets crazy. Yep. But I wouldn't. Uh, oh. Sorry, I was just going to say ecocentric homestead. I totally agree with you. This is a great point right there. I missed it. What did he say? Uh, one of the last things. Uh, most city folk, if lost in the country, would starve to death being surrounded by food. There's so many food in the in the nature. That yeah, it's true. It's not just what you can grow. It's what you could harvest also. Mm -hmm. That's one of the aspects that I've always been fascinated about. And this is one of the aspects that I want to try to learn as much as I can in the future. Danielle says that she does it. It all started with a mix of good food, healthy food, back to basics, independence, environment. Yeah, as, actually, that's another thing I forgot to say. Uh, I want, I wanted to do it to live a simpler life. Like I still work, but at the end of the day, it's a simpler life. It's less stressful. I still experiment some stress, but the stress is created by me, not by a corporate person uh knocking on my door is this is this report done is this done is this done i control most of my environment the stress is not the same no the stress is not the same <laughs> at all well the stress that i experiment is the stress that i give myself like i remember when i started i failure i keep saying this in a lot of videos like i was so scared to fail because failing means i couldn't provide my family and i was doing it to provide food for my family and then the stress of that oh my god i failed i won't feed my family okay i'm doing it again i failed again i don't have food on the table like i wanted to but now I have so much food sometimes I have to give it away because I can't process it all at the same time. Yeah. That was this year's current problem. <laughs> well, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, it's an excellent problem to have. Uh, and my neighbors love the donation for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it was this year was all about learning to manage a lot of food at the same time. Uh, we under Okay. It's true. It's true. We we are the source as homesteaders or people that decide to garden. We create our own stress. And it's at the end, it's supposed to be therapeutic gardening. I, it is for me anyway. <laughs> if I once I go in the garden, I mean, I could stay there forever. <clears throat> There's no like no worries at all. Like, is the carrot going to grow today or not? Like, you don't have to ask yourself the question. It's going to take a while to grow and you know, you, you can take your time, you just go and do your thing. And when you're done, you go back inside, take a bath, take a shower. And yeah, next morning you start again. But you go out, you hear the birds singing and the sun. No feeling like it. It's true. Time goes by super fast. I, I remember when I would go outside, even though if it's like sticky, wet, 40 degrees outside, I would just bring out a container and just go in the garden and just harvest and harvest and harvest and weed and weed. And it's like the, the sun was like hitting me. And then at one point I'm like, oh my God, I've been in, in the garden for like two, three hours. And I was listening to music or just listening to the birds or the environment around me. Like you can get literally lost in your thoughts for hours in the garden. Oh yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I think I, this year, I, it's been on my wish list for like super long. I want to install a chair and a table somewhere in my garden so that I can actually bring my coffee outside and drink my coffee or a glass of wine in the garden. That would be like fantastic. Watching the sunset. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be on my wish list of this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ecocentric, I, I asked you the question, but... The uh, thing is, I'm a new subscriber of yours. I know I subscribed to your channel lately, but I haven't had the chance to check all your videos yet. So I'm just wondering, you were talking about having food all around, but would you be able to identify most of the stuff? I've been I've been trying to find, like, I don't eat mushrooms, but I'm so fascinated by mushrooms. I would like to find someone to teach me how to forage mushrooms. Jardin Les Coumen has a online training, if my memory is correct. 
Oh yeah, I have to check that out. I think I know they have training about foraging. You would have to go check it out. There, are, it's obvious with everything going on right now. There are so many online tutorials that you can find. Yeah, you, and you just... there's apps. There's apps on your phone that you, that can help you identify what is um, the plants and the, yeah. But I, I've tried the app on one of my tree I have back there, mm -hmm. and in three different angles, it gave me three different answers. Not good. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna take the risk of eating. No, that's, uh, no, no, that's not good. Not good. Not eating good. a mushroom. No, but um, it's true. Foraging is something I lack. I don't have that knowledge yet, and I probably have not on my land because like i almost used every single inch i have and the rest is either clover dandelions or grass and i know dandelion you can eat it most i think you can eat the entire plant my memory is correct yeah i think so i know the flowers you can make salve tea no tea is the roots uh the flower you can make Jelly, you can make. You can uh, make jelly. jelly. Yeah. Uh, you can. Uh, there's many things. I know. That, I think the roots Butter. is for the teas. The the leafy part is in salads. I think yeah. most of the plant is edible. If anyone knows about the uh, the flower I just talked, uh, what is edible on the plant? I'm curious. Exactly, my my homemade homemade, and that won't replace training in person. It's true. It's true. It's true. But it would give you the basic knowledge that yeah. if you want to go out and experiment and then uh, identify. <laughs> it's not a good thing to experiment. I'm no, 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 that's not what I'm mushroom. saying. No, no. Um, when my, I had a friend in my village, she moved to Gaspizi and what she used to do is she had an online training and she was using a book and she would go walk in the forest and so take identify. pictures and identify them and then she would send the pictures to a friend of hers which is someone experimented and she would say okay this mushroom i found this is what identified it is it correct and then the person said yes and no and that's now now she's able able to forage mostly on her own nice the only thing i know about in the foraging area is basically like all the wild berries you know, we have so many blueberries around here, uh, wild strawberries, uh, raspberries, and stuff like that. Uh, we have some small hazelnuts, and we have fiddleheads. You so have that's hazelnuts? That's all I know. Well, those little nuts there, yeah. Hazelnut. Um, I don't know if they're hazelnuts. No, it's probably nuts, no, because uh, hazelnut. Uh, no, the noisettes. It's um. The little ones. I forgot the name they're in good. English. Ani, you changed your name of your channel. You've called yourself Mama Homemade. Am I going to see a new channel being set up soon, Mrs. Ani? Oh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes, it's, it is helpful to go, to go to the garden before the kids wake up. Less chaos. It is therapeutic, but we still connect to this world of performances it's true we cannot fully ignore that we do have technology because if it wasn't for technology i we wouldn't be here tonight yeah uh google translate is telling me that hazelnuts is noisette okay i was wrong so sorry yeah. uh, oh and even um danielle told us it was hazelnut yeah. i'm so sorry sorry i'm not doing my job no worries there i just have to take care of a comment uh okay uh, roast and pow okay roast and powder roots for coffee substitute um coffee substitute uh, i want everyone around me my loved ones to survive so coffee is a necessity in my house but i would probably taste it to see what it tastes like but a coffee replacement not for this mama this is what i have here yeah tea <laughs> all its uh dandelion uh, roots okay I Amy mean, from Mama Homemade is on the bench of creating a French YouTube channel. So whoever is here, tell her that she does not need to fear it and to jump in a leap of right faith. In. Maybe with all of us telling her <laughs> that she can do it, she <laughs> might right she might jump. 
Noisette Blanc, Homestead My Kids, Eat Dandelions, they are so also good to make salves. Yes, this year I plan on doing uh, salves in jelly. I am, I've heard that the dandelion jelly tastes just like honey. We'll see. Um, if you don't eat enough of Nutella, they call the tartinade noisette. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Oh, you see, even Danielle says, Annie, Danielle says, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> and Danielle is also a French YouTuber, and we are actually in the process of a collaboration. We're talking about a possible collaboration on our French channel. So, Annie, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> I, did I say it? Do it. And for the record, I don't think that dandelion tea replaces coffee. It no. doesn't give me the energy that the coffee does. It tastes good though. It mm -hmm. might give me like the the feeling of comfort in the morning that you need, in, especially in the winter. You know, just to have a warm drink. It doesn't give me the energy, and I'm trying to stop coffee because I want to stop sugar, so I'm not going to add sugar in there. Well, it, I know that coffee is not good for you. Like I know it. I'm like I. It's one of the. It, I'm, I don't smoke. I don't drink that much. But that's like the only like bad thing. Well, I drink. the coffee. The coffee itself is not that bad. It's no, actually well, coming the from the sugar. I put sugar. Yeah. Well, I don't put the white sugar. I put unrefined cane sugar. So it's it's still sugar, but it's natural sugar. Natural. So I tried. It, I tried stevia, but uh, I've never tried like stevia. It. I tried honey in in the coffee. Mm -mm. I tried. Um, what else did I try? Maple syrup. Oh, that's good. Uh, well, maybe with a French vanilla coffee, I probably would enjoy it better. Okay. But like, a, like a coffee, a normal coffee. No, I didn't like it. And those. Um, um, I don't take any like imitation of sugars because there, yeah. there's like there are chemicals in it and those co coffee creamers thingy i don't i don't drink that either so coffee yeah. it is and um i don't know maybe i'm dependent of the caffeine in the morning but that 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 is what is actually getting me up black coffee i can't do that you're you're good you're good i can't do black coffee i still do sugar and a little bit of cream uh, might not be good for you, but it's good for me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. When, when I started YouTube, uh, I thought if the videos were bad, can't be worse than some other there, and I kept on posting, I would automatically get better. As Yes, you're absolutely right. I remember when I started, I was super, super nervous. Uh, I would film and then just throw away my um, my videos. I was I was not actually putting myself out there. So yes, definitely. Hello, Homestead Aquarius. Hey, Robert. Right. Thanks for passing by. If uh, since you just joined us, do you want to tell us if you homestead? Well, obviously you do homestead, and uh, tell us a little bit about your homestead. You can't fail YouTube if you, if you don't quit. Yes, it's funny that you say that. <laughs> I was just talking about to me about that a couple of days ago. Uh, I was feeling stuck for a while and. Uh, I just got unstuck because I just kept pushing and doing it. Yep. Yes, it is Robert. You're right. You're better with names than I am. I'm <laughs> terrible with names. My memory's terrible. not that bad, I guess. Yeah, I will remember tomato varieties, pepper varieties, uh, houses on the street, who lives there, but names. <laughs> I can't remember names. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I would see someone in a crowd, I would know that I know them, but I can't put a name on their face. So, so frustrating. Uh, I am, st would you like to share something, Homestead Aquarius, which is Robert? 
about homesteading. I'll let you a little bit of time to answer. Okay, so I'm going to ask a couple of more questions uh, to you, Remy, and to whoever is watching. What is your favorite thing to grow? Oh, God. That's a tough one. It keeps changing every year. Okay, top three. Top three. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess the first thing that I succeeded with um, was carrots. And for some reason, I mean, I love eating carrots, and I eat them in pretty much every meal I make. Um, you know, stews, broth, uh, soups, whatever. Um, and then after I succeeded with cucumbers last year for the first time, I guess that probably fell in top of, on the top of my list. But now this year, um, I discovered, <laughs> it's funny to say, I discovered uh, all the uh, zucchinis and, uh, you know, uh, squash, uh, the squash family, basically. I've never had squash before this year. I decided to try for my garden just because, you know. Summer squash big. or winter squash? All kind of squash. Okay. I never tried squash before. All the squash family, except for zucchinis that I tried for the first time last year, was the first time this year that I would try squash. And I loved it. So I, I think that this has now become my favorite thing to grow. It's squash is what I, definitely yeah. fun. It's the, if you, didn't, you don't have the pests, so it's and fun to have. They don't need much. You just no, put the they seeds, don't. they grow by themselves, and they're big. <laughs> And every year when I bring in my compost, I always have like at least five to ten weird squash plants that grows in my compost. Like they, you can you can have a compost pile, you can put a pumpkin there, and you would have like the next year a lot of pumpkins that you wouldn't know what to do with them. They're like the easiest nice. thing. And if you don't I have the, that. you should you should. I have a lot of pest pressure, so I have to be very careful what I do. Uh, I have like the vine borers and the squash bugs and the um, cucumber beetle and the striped beetles. I have all those lovely pests. I've never had success with pumpkins, so I guess I should try that. Just go put pumpkins. My... Pumpkins, you need to go with the variety that is designed for your climate because they are long, long, long periods for um, their, the, their days to maturity are like yeah. over a hundred days sometimes. Uh, Jardin Les Coumen has a bush type pumpkin that is 80 days if my memory is correct. I think I ordered some from uh, my gardener also that were more set for, for my zone. Yeah, okay. I've missed a couple of comments. Let me catch up. I have a massive plot of land and many plants everything i can fit on a half an acre a mini homestead in the making i feel you i am on a third of an acre and uh, on that i have my gardens my house and like the parking lot and my kids play area so every little square inch counts thanks for sharing that and Hello, Bramble Hill Homestead. This is the first time I see you live and welcome. It's been a while we haven't chat. Uh, tomatoes and sunflowers. I would have sunflowers to agree. Are fun. Sunflowers are beautiful. They're beautiful to grow and they're so easy to grow too. Um, anyone else? Cabbages and tomatoes and peppers. Yes, yes. Hopefully I, I can have my uh, greenhouse this year to try the peppers. I did. I had small peppers like the size of a quarter last year. So you can just imagine that I took a lick on it and uh, my mouth uh, was burning. Same thing with your ground zone. You have to go with smaller peppers and northern climate peppers. The yeah. king, of, king of the north and the um, Romania something. I can't remember. I'll give you the name if you want. Those are like uh, Russian type peppers. Yeah, they grow faster. They grow faster and they can adapt because what happens with a pepper, if uh, it goes down a certain degrees, they will stunt for like 30 days. Oh, okay. That's probably what happened. And you can't plant, you have to plant them at a certain time that the soil temperature is like warm enough so that they boom right away. Or yeah. if you plant them too early, they're like going to be stunted and then they're going to take their sweet ass time to produce. A greenhouse would help still. A greenhouse much. would definitely help. For sure. Yeah. Greenhouse helps so much for peppers. 
Favorite thing to grow. Favorite thing to grow from Ecocentric Homestead. Favorite is squash, even though they don't do well here. It's true. Some places around around the around our place at uh, well, in Canada, they're hard. The pests for me make it so hard, but I love growing them. I tried the seeds and pumpkin last year and I loved it so much. They are still good too. Good. Um, uh, things I will be doing on my homestead. Quails, raising and aqu aquaponics. Again, and gardening in natural organic ways. That's a good, good way of going. I love what you guys are writing. Uh, I like to grow winter squash too. I still have a lot of them in the cold room. Good for you. Good for you. I I still, I think I have like four left. I tried sunflowers this past year. However, with that heat dome that happened, they weren't so happy. Is that um, the, the fires that you had going on in your location? Is that what you're talking about? Bramble Hill Homestead? A greenhouse, you see, a greenhouse helps so much for peppers. Okay, so I'm going to do it with you. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> with you, with oh, I have it. I purchased it last year. I still well, have it should. in the basement. Do it. <laughs> Just, yeah. Peppers are only in pots here. Yes, for sure. Uh, when you are in quarter, uh, colder northern climate zone four, in pots it's better. You can bring them inside if ever the temperature goes down too much. Um. I bet you folks in Canada are really itching to get. Yes, yes, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> For sure. But we still have a long way to go. <laughs> Too long. Uh, well, it's not that long. In uh, <laughs> What day are we? We're at the ninth. I would say in five, six weeks, I start with my onions and my celery. Oh, that's fun. Uh, Palma culture. Where did it go? Where did the comment go? Oh, there it goes. Uh, permaculture methods are my way in as much. True, permaculture will help you on a long run. It's hard to get started, but once it's established, it makes everything so much easier. Yeah. And only six months Only six ago. months to go. Yeah, that, that's a little time. Only six months. Only six months. <laughs> that's the way I feel sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that will give you a head start. It's true, the the uh, the green the greenhouse also will provide you a good head start. So let's just say that you can buy yourself two three weeks in the spring and buy yourself two three week, two three weeks in the fall. That gives you a minimum of four weeks of growing with your peppers. Uh, so, yep, you'll love a greenhouse. We get snowed until June. Oh, my God, so <coughs> until June. Wow. And it starts snowing in October with frost starting in late August, early September. We do our peppers in pots, and they work great. So and I, the reason I didn't build a greenhouse last year is because I have, like, the setup made on, on the side of the house for just a small gardens. And this is where I wanted to put my greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And then I was waiting for a guy to come and tell, because I wanted to grow my garden. I wanted to make it better, bigger, sorry. And then by the time he came, it was too late in the season. I already started growing like lettuce and cabbage and stuff like that in the small garden over there. So that's why I didn't build a greenhouse. I figured, you know, I'm not going to build a greenhouse for lettuce and kale and spinach because this is the stuff that doesn't need a greenhouse. But in the spring this year, I plan on making the greenhouse on that side. It's going to stop the wind a little bit because here the wind is just crazy. So if I don't put it on that side of the house, I'm going to lose it. Yes, that's uh, we have high winds here and we have to protect and anchor or uh, or high tunnel like when it rains and um, when it rains hard or it winds hard i'm like outside and i'm looking at my greenhouse i'm like please don't stay run there. away <laughs> stay there you don't want to see uh, the news yeah. in the next morning with your greenhouse yeah, well, on top of another house well it's a converted tempo so the structure if it rips there's going to be there's going to be a little bit of damage but like i where i'm positioned if the if the wind lifts my um I have an it's in how you say that in English? Uh, cedar. Uh, it's a cedar wall, like the trees. And it's in. Uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Anyways, their their cedars are like uh, about twenty feet tall, so the the tempo structure is gonna hit those those trees. So I should be fine, but anchor it seriously. 
so many greenhouse uh i saw in the um the groups on facebook people were devastated like we had bad temperatures in the spring and i saw so many people lose everything um we have to transplant out our fruit trees start from seed start from seeds of the fruits from the store and they're getting big in their pots you're already sowing some seeds honey badger homesteads you're so lucky um yes we had that 50 degrees celsius weather in british columbia where we are and with the fires it was awful were you hit by the floods after the fire i will start the tomatoes and peppers in about four weeks wow can you almost taste it <laughs> um next comment is there anyone here that has an underground greenhouse or wallapini or grown food indoors right now i am i am trying a an experiment to grow um lettuce greens <coughs> uh basil uh Tiny Tim tomatoes, a type of pepper, and a dwarf cucumbers. I bought a special lamp to have um, the vegetable stayed and the Florasian stayed. So it's an experiment. I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm hoping. Crossing my fingers because, like, I am looking forward for, to fresh food. Be positive. Be positive. It's going to yes. work. It, well, regardless what happens, I'm going to have basil. So <laughs> that's good enough. Basil and lettuce. I start my first seed on January 31st. I'm pushing my luck with my greenhouse. Good luck with that. Last year, I planted at the beginning of March in the tunnel. So it's coming. I can't wait. Yes, yes. Oh, nice. I'm still going to be buried in the snow by that time. Yes, well, <laughs> we. I hope it snows here because like, we still don't have that much snow. GYB Gaming, I haven't seen you here on the channel. Welcome. It's my I son. Love... Oh, it's your son? Yeah. Hi. He's your old son. <laughs> I love well, how you and my dad are talking together. <laughs> finally, someone in my family supporting me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, what zone are you in? Seems like your neighbors. I am in zone five. And Remy, you are in? I don't know anymore. I think it's 4A. I thought yeah. it was 4B, and then I thought it was 5, and then I thought it was 3, and then after multiple days of trying to, to figure it out, I think I'm somewhere on the line of 4B <laughs> and 4A or 5. You're, you're dancing on the line of 4A. Yeah, <laughs> depending how I feel, I guess. Yes, uh, I think I'm, I'm 4A at the moment. I Well, I on the map it says I'm 5B, but uh, same thing. I'm like in a microclimate, so depending. So I just say 5. makes it easier. Yeah. And the reason why I know so much about zone four is I'm helping out my best friend that moved from my village down um, in Matan in Gaspizi and she is zone four and I am helping her set up her farm. So I have to learn a little bit about zone four, zone four. to help her out. Uh, and sunroom attach. To the house is a good option for growing late fall, early spring. Yes, definitely. If you can add a like glass house next to your house, that it would actually heat your house as well. Yep. <laughs> your son says subscribe to Rem's family. <laughs> Go, Dad. <laughs> Homestead Aquarius. Uh, does onion le leaves count? Yes, it does. Those those green tops are delicious, actually, in sandwiches. She ate them, yeah. I put them in sandwiches or in any type of recipe that I need onions. Zone three. I think if I would move the lowest, I would go would be zone three. That would be because I would have to face the fact that it would be I would be snowed in till June. <laughs> Cedar hedge. Thank you. That's what I was looking for earlier. Uh, da, 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 da. You got this, Dad. He's even <laughs> cheering for you. Yeah. Uh, yes, that counts. Trying to grow indoor, trying. What are you growing, Danielle? Uh, I grow inside this year. Annie, what do you grow? Well, I know it, but you can share it with the people. Uh, I have indoor grow areas. I have two years old tiny Tim plants. Wow. Right. 
it gives me hope. It gives me hope. Yeah, tiny tin plants are usually like they can last very long in, inside. This is the only thing I've ever tried indoors. Actually, I had them uh, in those little basket you buy at dollar store and okay. you throw them heads down, and it lasted as long as I kept. Uh, watering it, I guess. Uh, watering them, as soon as I stop watering them. Uh, I'm trying I... for uh, dwarf type tomatoes this year. Geranium Kiss, Red Robin, Tiny Tim, and Orange Hat. And I read that Red Robin is designed for poor lighting and indoor growing. So I'm giving, I ordered seeds of the Red Robin and I will try it. So if ever you want to try That's this right. indoor um, gardening experience, Tiny Tim, Orange Hat, the uh, Geranium Kiss, it's quite tall. That one's like 30 inch tall. So that one's pretty big. But the, this one, the Red Robin, I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying out. Maybe this year I'm going to get tomatoes by the time I transplant my plants, but I would definitely give it a try in the fall to see if I can have like small cherry tomatoes for the winter that would be great um you have it going on yes well we're trying it's super cold outside so green it, i guess makes us happy uh we're in zone six so not we're too hot not too cold a little bit of snakes and spiders do you have spiders and spiders <laughs> honey badgers homestead do you have snakes and spiders People are saying hi to your son. <laughs> Boreal Homestead. I still can't wrap my head around Tubi. I just, it must be terribly cold. I watched your your greenhouse video the other day and you told me your warmest nights last year was 11 degrees Celsius or like oh, wow. an average. I can't remember. And you had a couple weeks of 30. That was it. Uh, that must be cold. That must be cold. <laughs> where are your folks i am in the province of quebec in canada and remy is in new brunswick and i but i think it was asking any badgers homestead oh and I, sorry. I think it said earlier they were, they were in nova scotia oh sorry yes tomatoes and basil uh, your stun's still cheering for you. <laughs> Red robin tomatoes, cucumbers and greens. Yes. Last year, I harvested my first tiny Tim tomato on January 1st. That must have been an epic moment. Whoa. That must have been an epic moment for sure. I sowed mine on January 1st, and I'm hoping that April 1st, I <laughs> have my first tomato, crossing my fingers. Uh, oh, what? I was right. She said nights were 11 degrees Celsius, but a lot cooler, colder than usual. But still, uh, honey Nova badger Scotia. homestead. We are in Nova Scotia, so you are neighbors. Okay, I can share my top threes, and people that know me knows me very well for one of them, which is. Tomatoes. tomatoes. <laughs> uh, everyone that comes at my house or watch my tomato collection, I kind of have a lot of seeds of tomato. I love growing the colorful ones, the rare ones, and the funny shaped ones. And I have to actually bring myself down every year and say, you preserve food. You preserve food. <laughs> so... I have to live myself with tomatoes. I love tomatoes. Well, it's amazing everything you do with your tomatoes. I was watching your video about how you plan everything you do. Yes. According to how many how many pounds yes. of tomatoes you need and where you put them. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, that was on it's my amazing. French channel. Uh, yeah, I do plan on talking about tomatoes in the future uh, here because uh, I love growing tomatoes. I love, I love it so much. It's so easy to grow. I actually, in the spring, I go smell my tomato buds. <laughs> I know I'm crazy, but uh, I love like the, the when you touch the leaves, they, there's like a special smell. I just love it. Um, I would say my second is carrots. I love to go outside in the garden and grab carrots and just wash them like quickly and just like that crunch and that sugar in your mouth that like the like a pickle almost i love that and my third one what would be my third favorite hmm i'm hesitating between beets 
and cucumbers. I love cucumbers. I'm going to go with cucumbers. I love cucumbers, but I can't, I can't grow them here uh, because of all the pests. But I did find three varieties that grows very well here. So if I could eat like cucumbers three times a day, I think I probably would. I remade my plan to after your video and double the amount of... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Blaming on Andy. Yes. Well, um, <laughs> Mama Homemade, uh, the other day we were talking and um, I would say, oh, my God, I found these seeds on this website and uh, I, I shouldn't buy it. Like, I won't buy it. I won't buy it. And then she goes, why not? I'm like, you're supposed to help me. <laughs> you're supposed to stop me from buying all those seeds. Uh, you can grow extra, and if you get too many, they add. It's true. It's true. Well, I have chickens, so if ever I grow too much, or uh, a plant is devoured by pests, I make sure to uh, feed it to my chickens. Anyone else want to share their favorite food to grow? We would go with the ones that we struggle the most with. Actually, that's while we wait, people. yeah. So, since it's your idea, you go first. <laughs> um, I have to say, cucumbers is one of the the veggie that I struggle the most. Um, actually, not twenty twenty one, but twenty twenty was the only summer I was actually able to succeed with cucumbers. Did you pay and attention? What was happening? It was in the middle of my garden. Were you think, seeing were you seeing pests or stuff like that? No, or? and nothing happened like that this year either. I think it's just that I planted it on on the edge of my garden, and when everything happened with the village, they you know that caused trouble with my animals and stuff. Um, I kind of let everything go for a couple of weeks, and the weeds just took over, and my cucumbers never grew. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing this is probably the main issue. But I know next year I'll try to do something more vertical. And uh, I know I know what to do at least. I um, have better success trellising my my cucumbers. When I leave them growing on the ground, I lose them to power powdery mildew like within a couple of days. Yeah, you have to pick them up pretty pretty quickly. But yeah, like in twenty twenty, I probably ate like two cucumbers per day for like two three months. I had you even so made popsicles many, with them. I made popsicles. I made high scoops. I lip that in the freezer and you know in the morning i would put some in my water and go to work it would keep my water colder and would also give me some good vitamins true um, true i for some reason i struggle with herbs um i don't herbs? really have a spot like not not like i'm probably gonna succeed with mints this year because i planted them last year mint grows but, everywhere <laughs> yeah exactly uh, so that one doesn't really count but i tried to grow um I, from seeds, I had basil, I had uh, rosemary, I had uh, some other type of mints, and I failed at every single one of them. Were you so growing basil inside? I tried inside. I after I realized that it was wasn't growing, I tried directly so direct so outside, and it didn't mm -hmm. work either. Didn't work. No. Nope. I know basil is a very delicate plant, so maybe that could be it. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, I struggle with pumpkins for some reason. Uh, my brother has those big, huge pumpkins at his place. Um, I was able to grow like one pumpkin a year, about the size of a softball. So, <laughs> do you I mean, test? Do you test your soil? Nope, I should, but at the same time, I buy my uh, my compost at the same place as my brother, and he succeeds, and I don't. Okay. Well, I would test it because you don't have the same original soil under than he yeah. has. Because let's just say that you put four inch of compost and then under it's your native soil. The roots will actually reach your native soil. So if your brother and you don't have the same native soil, it yeah. could be it could, it could be, be there. Yeah. But I think it's more about the time that he transplants them. Could be, could be. He starts them like a month early inside and then he transplants them, but I know oh, for no. squash, you guys in zone four, uh, instead of starting them two weeks before your frost, you have to start them four weeks before your frost, if my memory is correct. Yeah. So that could be it. He's probably, and if you transplant them outside too early and it gets too cold at night, it can actually stunt your plants. 
So maybe a tool of transplanting chart would be useful for you. Yeah. <laughs> I like your way of thinking, uh, ecocentric, eco eco uh, even better, we turn loss into eggs. Yes, turn a problem into a very good solution. I love also how you turn waste food into bacon. That's another one I really enjoy. Uh, you folks pick up the Atlantic current and it warms you up a little, right? It gives you a bit of the micro crumb. A little bit, just a little bit. Not me. I'm not that close. I'm like really far from the Atlantic. Maybe you, Rems? I'm right beside you. Yeah, so maybe you get benefit from it. I don't think I get any benefit uh, from it. I think it. we get the coal from it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I know. It is the plan this year to grow my cucumbers on a trellis and mostly safe space. It's not. I find that trellising food is actually beauty at the same time because it creates those like wild vines in your garden and then you trellis them and then there's like foliage everywhere. You get like this romantic view in your garden. Your son is still on. He's still cheering for you. <laughs> He's still watching. Yeah. Uh, thyme and savory, I find it's easy to grow. Green. Yeah, it's true. It's true. They come back. Nice. Mountain Roots, welcome. This is the first time I see you. Thanks for popping in. I think, did I miss anyone? I don't think I missed Mountain anyone. Foods. So you, it's cucumbers and what was the other one? Herbs and pumpkins. Pumpkins, okay. Uh, well, for the life of me, I couldn't grow from seeds, cabbages. Um, I've tried and failed so many times, cabbages from seeds. Like I can, if I buy a seedling, I would get, uh, the years past, I would get like maybe one or two cabbages out of the six. This year, I bought a lot of cabbages seedlings and I was able to get stuff, but like seedlings for me were like the worst. Every Everything in the cabbage family, I couldn't grow it. Um, cabbage, like uh, the, the green, the red, the cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprout, anything in that family, I couldn't do it. Um, I would struggle usually with cucumber, but this year, since I changed my um, my game and went with northern climates adaptable to the disease that I have, I finally had so much cucumbers, I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, squash. Squash is a big, 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 big problem. Like, I have to manually remove eggs of the vine borer oh. two, two, three times a day. So if I have 30 plants... I have to examine the base of the plants a couple times a day and remove the eggs. And then the damaged plant that the vine borers are inside, I have to remove the uh, little um, larva, disgusting wiggly thing, <laughs> and hope that the plant survives the operation. Uh, I would say maybe 50% of the time, 60% of the time I lose the plant. But like, if I didn't do it, the plant's going to die anyways. So squash is, is a struggle for me. So cabbage, squash. What else do I have? Uh, beets. I love growing beets, but they're not big. And the ones that I have are like they're about this big. Size of a radish. Yeah. So they taste great, but they're not like those big, big, big um, balls. Um and I would say that was it. Uh, is there anything else that I struggle? Well, obviously I have like um, the greens that they're like, eaten by like all the pests and everything. But I don't really carve that as a struggle. It's just the pest. It's, that's just it. Hello to our Haven Farm. Hope you had everyone. Wait, it cut. Hope everyone are doing amazing. To yes, we are doing amazing. Thanks for popping in. Welcome, be... Darren. Darren, um, obviously, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to ask, uh, Mountain Roots, I'm looking for your, to try to find your channel. Do you have a channel or I'm trying to share it with everyone, but I can't find it. <laughs> your son says, I love you, Dad. <laughs> He's uh, spamming the whole thing there. It's okay. It's cute. It's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. 
Did you find his channel? I couldn't find it. As you search, uh, Darren, we are talking, well, if you want, obviously the why of the homestead was alive. Uh, you can share a little bit in the comments of why you homestead. And uh, we were talking about our struggles and our success, our favorite things to grow, if you want to share a couple of things. Did you find his uh, channel? Nope. Nope. Me, maybe he does not. I, I look at a logo and I try to find the same thing, and it keeps bringing me another channel. Mm. <clears throat> hello, hello. I struggle read a big guys, but I it's uh, I struggle to have them big. But I still end up like having them small, so it's not that bad. So if anyone has tips on growing big rutabagas, we are all ears. <laughs> uh, how's it going, Torhaven? Uh, what channel are you trying to find? Yours. We're, we're trying to find yours so that Remy can put it in the chat. So if ever someone wants to go check you out, they can. If you do have a channel. If you have one, yeah. If you have one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yours. <laughs> yeah, That's when what... I search on YouTube for mountain roots, it comes out as like another another channel. It's not yours, and I can't find it in, in the list here. Okay, so Tor, Darren says, okay, uh, he answered, I'm going to, before I'm going to answer Remy's question, it's formerly Homestead overland okay there so it i is. guess i'm subscribed by the way okay now darren says wanted to take prepping up a level where we could grow and raise the food that we eat uh so you're gonna be able to answer the other questions that we asked people here uh what is your favorite thing to grow you can give us like top three or top four <clears throat> Homestead Aquarius, yes, due to the coastal weather that surrounds Nova Scotia. Okay, so he changed his name today. Oh. Uh, That's why. And YouTube I found is, it, by the way. YouTube is being a slowpoke. Sorry, <laughs> uh, right. we're just trying to help each other out. Sweet potatoes! Does anyone grow sweet potatoes? I have to start this year. Yes, I am going. I'm sending my my husband to go buy me uh, organic uh, sweet potatoes soon, so that I can make my slips. I usually do it like in April, but this year I think I'm going to start earlier. Uh, so you're jumping on the sweet potato wagon? I'll have to. Uh, you convinced me, and uh, Hickory Croft Farm had a video about it a couple of uh, years ago, also. I want to try um, because my husband does not like it at all. And um, I want to try that air fryer device. And I heard that the fries in there of either the potatoes or the sweet potatoes taste amazing. So I have to find a way for him to eat sweet potatoes. <laughs> Did uh, you try them as a uh, French fries? Yes. You didn't he like it? No. He identifies them right away and puts them aside. Oh. When I met him, he did not eat squash. He did not eat sweet potatoes. Uh, and like, I love squash, butternut squash, buttercup, acorn, uh, spaghetti squash, all those like common squash. Um, what else? The curry ones. Like I would eat squash like once a week. And now every time I take out a, like, a squash or a pumpkin, he's like, not again. <laughs> So I have to find a way, creative ways, because like squash is if I can get them to grow here with one butter squash, I can make at least like two, three meals. Nice. And it makes different a little bit between potatoes. Okay. So what did I miss? If anyone has suggestions for sweet potatoes also, uh, you can put them in the comments because there's a lot of people that wants to learn about sweet potatoes, me included. Uh, I just picked you up. 
I don't know who this message. Oh, okay, that's not oh. for us. Mountain roots. Honey Badger Homestead says she grows sweet potatoes. If you have tips for us, please share. Uh, give me a week and my channel will be all you find when you type mountain roots. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, mountain roots. I just picked you out. Okay, I ran. Uh, favorite thing to grow. Let's read that. Uh, Highland cows, obviously. Actually, <laughs> probably peas and beans because I can snack on the. It's true. I forgot to count snacking in the garden. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's true. They taste amazing. Okay, but not crispy air fryer. Okay, thanks. I heard they were delicious in the air fryer, but. I guess everyone has their um, their recipes. Most of my struggle is because I try to make everything an ecosystem. There is a lot of plants that don't like. It's true. Any it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be like a process since you're creating an ecosystem. Well, biodiversity at the same time. Uh, my it just kids... becomes harder to squeeze everything together. Yeah, but once it, everything is established and at its place, yeah, everyone It'll benefits. Be right. Yeah, my kids don't like sweet potatoes. <laughs> I guess it's popular. Josh, love the new name. Okay, so, so it's probably Mountain Roots. Yes, I guess that's what you're talking about. Thanks, Homestead Aquarius. Okay. What do we have for sweet potatoes? Well, with a dipping sauce and ketchup, mayo, and a bit of hot sauce. So good. Try okay. with hot sauce before. Yeah, everything Very is good. good with hot sauce. I, I don't know where that saying comes from, but that's what I hear all the time. Well, you can try it with bacon. Everything's good with bacon also. Yes, that's hard. That's hard. <laughs> Whoever tells me they don't like bacon, I look at them like they're like aliens. <laughs> okay, no, I do respect the... the um, Le Végétalien, the... Um, Vegans. vegans. I respect the vegans, but I mean, if you're like a, a meat eater and you do not like bacon, I, I, I have all those big question marks in my face. I just, I don't understand. Uh, definitely, oh, definitely That's try sweet potatoes in high tunnel or caterpillar tunnel and don't water them like you think you need to. Okay, so they don't like they don't like the water, so they're like plants that loves to suffer, I guess. <laughs> well, sometimes the, the idea is that any root, vegetable, any root plant, if you don't water them, the plant will try to go deeper in the soil to go and find that water, and they'll make them grow a little bit better, bigger. So, that's, so I, I think would, this, this could be the idea behind it. So I that's why they're like long, uh, they're like long? Could Maybe. Be. I know that's the case with carrots. They say that you shouldn't water your carrots all the time. Not as much as other vegetables. At first, I, I you have to water water them. water them, and then you let them go. Well, that's that's yeah. what I do. They prefer arid uh, climate. Okay. I learn every day. Thanks for sharing. Um, I guess uh, mountain roots. I did that this year, but did not work well. But they were in pots, maybe in soil i tried grow bags this year and it was a puny harvest i had five plants and they were so little uh i don't think they enjoy the pots or maybe the size of the pots were not big enough i don't know oh pot grown sweet potatoes struggles so there's my answer so no more in pots <laughs> Okay, uh, rosemary is one that uh, like harsh conditions, so I yell at them. <laughs> okay, that must be. Make sure to bring your um, your the your cup of mead with you. It's gonna be a heck of a show. <laughs> I'm sure it probably does for real though. Like I can Pro see him outside yelling yeah. at the rosemary. Yeah. Um. Uh, Darren, if you want, you can also share the biggest uh, struggles you had with uh, your vegetables. And thank you for all the tips, Mountain Roots. I didn't catch your name, if you can put them in the comment. So I stopped calling you Mountain Roots. I think it's Josh. It's Josh? From what I understood from the, the Okay, can you confirm there. that your name is Josh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with the all the, um, <clears throat> all the names. And I'm so sorry if I forget your names. It's not 
it's not your fault. It's my fault. Names is like, I can't. <laughs> my memory i like i said earlier i can remember a lot of tomato varieties pepper varieties and the stuff around the garden but names josh oh Steele. josh yes i'm okay yes i'm so sorry i actually speak to him he's the one that helped me with um the uh the thumbnail app i was talking to you about i'm so sorry josh <laughs> i feel bad too many people now making too many friends yes yes and my memory is not helping. <laughs> I try to support everyone that join our, our live streams. And now I'm at the point where I can't even watch like the big, big shows anymore. I don't watch Justin Rose. I don't watch So The Land. I don't watch them uh, it's because true. I don't have time. I prefer supporting like smaller, smaller channels and you no. Know, when I started, when I started my YouTube journey in March of last year, seriously, I would watch the bigger, the bigger channels like religiously, and because I didn't really have community, I didn't really. I think I've met you guys late summer or midsummer last year, and now I think I watch one big channel, and the rest is just the the community that I've built over the over the months. And I'm guessing the one you watch is the one uh, with a certain young couple in Alaska? No. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I like them too. Oh, no, actually, Simple there's, Living Alaska. There's two. There's uh, occasionally I watch um, Off Grid, uh, The Year Life. Oh, what, what's it called? Um, uh, with uh, Jake and Nicole. Jake and Nicole Off Grid or something like that. The, that one I watch it occasionally, but the one I watch religiously is living, Simple Living Alaska for sure. I love those guys. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, they, the, the views and everything, it's like so peaceful. They have a way to complement each other in a way that, you know, it makes the videos are long, but they're so interesting. Like it, it's so peaceful to watch them. Like I, like I was telling you the other day, I fall asleep watching them, not because they're boring, but because it's it relaxes my mind so much. Like I just sit there in front of the TV and I just like, there's nothing else in the world. The way that they make like all those sounds, all those images, and they have so much knowledge. It's fun. Okay. So I'm pardoned by Josh. He says no biggie. <laughs> I like the channel name, by the way uh i'm pretty sure i won't forget my yes well it's if i forget your name mama homemade it's it's like if i forget my own name your name is annie <laughs> so uh, i will never forget hers big struggle okay so darren says it's trying to get more and more organic material into our sandy soil we could tell with veggies needed food this year it's true it's true starting on a either heavy clay or sandy soil brings some challenges but if you have a bunch of rabbits just uh take their manure and put it straight in the in your soil yeah that could be an option like i don't know if you have a way of picking it up but well, the only way of picking up rabbit poop is putting um, a container and a drying rack yeah. under. But I think he has them on the ground outside. He has a little. Uh... Yeah, I have them. I have mine off the ground to pick up the manure and to bring it into the garden. But if it's on the ground, he's he's working his pasture. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> And I would say maybe, Darren, the lasagna-style garden, if you can find organic matter, that would maybe make a difference. Like layer, layering straw, old straw that farmers no longer can use and other type of organic material. The uh, I got that tip from the living simple, the you just said the word, uh, simple living Alaska. They did that with their garden. Welcome to YouTube. You may now abandon most of the children <laughs> that you used to love. Yep. Yes. But for the good reasons. Well, most of the channels that I started five years ago, they're so big today and they've reached their dreams and now they're living like their big homestead dreams. And I'm not there yet, so I still have to kind of put it down a notch and be realistic and and i feel they're repeating themselves after a while uh, it's just well, me but 
I don't know. Well, it depends on the channel. Some actually, yeah. they have to repeat themselves because the people don't go back to the previous yeah, videos. Yeah. And like, let's just say like a canning video, there's so much you can can with the salsa. You can't can twice the salsa, but people won't go back to some of your, some of yeah, your older videos. I'm pretty sure by next year, I'm going to repeat myself anyway, but. Yes. Ah, da, 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 da. Welcome to you. Da, da, da. I love them too. Oh, Remy, you have to present yourself. Josh does not know you. You don't know me. I'm a Rem's family. It used to be Rem's family farm, but the village asked me to get rid of my animals. So now the farm is gone and I am simply Rem's family. <laughs> well, you're still a farm because you have a garden and you have chickens. Yeah, I have a couple of animals, I guess. You're still a farm. Yeah. So I'm just trying to delete this guy here. Oh, we have another spammer. Yeah. There. Uh, oh. He, if a uh, tip for Darren, Stan eats organic material, even rabbit poop. Oh, right. That sucks. <laughs> That's a bummer. Don't till organic matter in. Let the bugs and worms do it. I totally agree. Okay, Darren says, yep, we have rubber meat containers under our rabbit cages, and it goes straight into the garden. Cow manure and chicken and pig manure go into the compost, which goes into the garden, too. We have another spammer. Yeah, I removed him, but he's still showing up in the uh, stream yard. I don't know why. Oh, here's another message for you. I, yeah. leave, the, I leave the village. <laughs> Um, yeah, I didn't have time to finish my story, but, uh, my house is for sale. Um, the day that the guy came to bring me this, uh, this letter here telling me that I had to get rid of all my animals. Uh, I called a couple of people around and they really put my house for sale. I took some pictures, put it online. Like, I mean, there was no argument there. I mean, I want to grow my own food. Um, I, the only thing I have a family of five kids and they don't want to switch school. So by doing this, if I want them to go to the same school, I have to stay somewhat close and there's not too many options that go to the same school and that's not in the same village. So, um, the guy that was here earlier, I don't know if he's still here. He hasn't been talking, but Serge, he was asking me to build a barn with him. He lives about well, he doesn't live there. He has a little uh, property about five minutes away from here. And uh, the plan is to build a barn there. But if I could find a property in that area or close to where he is, that would be a, the best option, I guess. You have no worms. No worms. You should start or look into maybe a uh, yarn, uh, a yarn, a worm farm. That would be interesting, maybe to help out your garden. <clears throat> this is for you. I wish you speedy sale. It's not just the sale part. You have to find the farm. I have to find a place after. I have to, to find someone interested in my house. And at the same time, there has to be a house available for me. And, you know, it has to be something that can hold a family of seven and have someone a nice property. I'm not going to move, um, you know, I'm just, I'm not just going to decide to move in order to move. I want to have a place where I can feel home, but there was someone here today to visit the house actually. So people are starting to show, um, interest in the house, which is good. Well, I wish you would sell the house. I am still stuck on my house, even though the city came at my house. I have yeah. no idea if ever I will be able to move, but if you can do it, I wish you the best. I'll try. I'll try for sure. Yeah, it's, I, I remember when the city came at my house and told me I had to kill all my animals. I wanted to. I think I was like a beast that ate like nuclear bombs. It was like a oh, it doesn't make sense. Oh, God. Like he, I was so angry. I felt like crying. Like I felt like my heart just stopped at that moment when he told me I had to get rid of my animals. He was at the door and he's like, we had a complaint about one of your neighbors that you have animals. You have to get rid of them. I'm like, what? He said, you have to get rid of your animals. Like what, 
what do you mean i have to get rid of my animals like are we not in an, a rural village like mm -hmm. am i not supposed to be able to grow my own food doesn't make sense and still doesn't that, make sense to me it doesn't like, it doesn't make sense but like they made the law so yeah and the, the reason they gave me was because uh you know i had over 75 meat chickens and i was almost to the point where i was uh it was almost a business but i told them i have five kids to feed mm -hmm. like they one don't like chicken it won't last a week no yeah, they, they don't like it but they don't like it when you live an unconventional life that's it yeah and neighbors that are either jealous or negative emotions toward you you know you always they're the ones that usually complain yeah. i have a neighbor like that and there's nothing i can do so i had to comply and i am making the best of it until we can either move or find an alternative yeah and the, the worst part is is like i don't know about you but here like we're a small community a small village everyone knows everyone um the neighbor like their oldest son graduated from uh, from school with me um they have a daughter that came over in my place to buy eggs for her mom which is the one that filed a complaint against me mm -hmm. um it doesn't no, make it's, sense it's terrible when people actually are invaded with negative negativity they, they just and she grew on the farm like so she would know what it is uh we tried doing a worm farm but too much other stuff on the go we will keep building the soil we got a ton of straw this year for roots stout, stout style. style potatoes nice on new grounds and more gardens that's fun that's a fun project it's gonna be uh, something to look up for yeah well i i i've, I've seen this uh art and brie used to do that like they have like a small amount of compost they put their potatoes maybe two three inch in the ground and then they water they water it a little bit then they put organic straw and then they um they water like heavily and they just let it grow and then you just remove part of the straw and the potatoes are like right there you don't even need to dig it's it's a fun experiment mm -hmm. i never tried it myself but uh it looks fun i've seen some people do it uh just buy worms and dump them in your garden or raised bed yeah yeah that would be an, an easy solution yeah, and if you can't find any, just go at any fishing store. They have worms there for bait. So just get some worms and put them in the soil. It'll work. Yeah, but I don't know if they would winterize. They're in uh, in the freezer most of the Not in the freezer, in the fridge for most of the time. So you can probably get used to the cold. They go deeper in the soil anyway. Uh, thanks for passing by, Josh. Have a nice evening. Yeah, take care. Uh, Sinly soils sometimes have no worms, but they may come up from lower down if there is organic layer spread on top. And there are beetles that cultivate the uh, okay two three the top two three inches. Yeah, that's interesting. <clears throat> nice, I'm learning uh, a lot today. <laughs> yeah, well, the community <laughs> is for that. I'm going to have to rewatch and take notes. Yes. Uh, get a wormery. Hi, Jill. Uh, Jill is someone you know? Nope. Okay. Well, hi, Jill. Welcome. Get a worm, uh, wormery. That's what he just said. Uh, I actually am thinking of building a worm farm, but I'm not set up just yet. Buying worms won't work. Yes, worms are good in cold climates. Okay. We are learning a lot tonight. Yeah, why won't worms work? Uh, I, I I know a little bit about worms. People can actually uh, complete what I say. I know some, <laughs> the worms that are in your garden, if they keep coming back every year, that means they're native to your soil and will um, they will stay there. If you buy worms and you just put them in your soil, they're not native to your soil and they're maybe not used to your climate, therefore they will die. So you would have to always put the worms back in uh that's the only thing i know uh honey badgers we have thought about it but net here makes reviews need studies and such on damaged worms 
to the forest in our area. I want to know more. It's true. Before introducing a new species into your yeah into your garden, sometimes it's good to actually have some research to back it up. But there's probably worms not too far from you. It's just a matter of you know finding it's fun, what kind it's, of yeah, it's finding the needed the ones. Light. Yeah. Does anyone want to share any tips, tricks? Because I am hearing my kids. It is close to magic hour of going cuckoo craziness. It's 7.30 here. And my husband is probably removing a couple of hair on his, <laughs> his head. <laughs> yeah, um, 20 inch down. Sand, sand, like fill up sandboxes. <laughs> that sucks. It sucks, but like I'm sure there's something you can do more. I well, I know the the best way would be um, maybe well, it would be very expensive. But um, those row covers that you put um, woven row covers and then build raised beds, that would be like very very expensive. But you have those I highly highland cows. I mean, they probably produce a lot of manures. That's going to help in the long run. Yeah, but he can't use the com he can't use the manure right away. He has to compost it. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think it's but a that, year or two years before he can use it in the garden. That's what I mean in the long run. Yeah, uh, like it's considered like really hot. A chicken is a year, and um, as true cardboard, I did not think of that. Cardboard would be a solution, but worms is. Uh, what does this mean? But worms in tons dough. I'm not sure I follow. Oh, she was talking about uh, she has the same issue as store, but they, she has worms. Okay, that's uh, what the, I understand. The worms you put in will leave for the same reason. There are none there now. The condi Okay, so he needs to change the conditions for the worms to stay. Okay, makes sense. I have, have to go put. Yes. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, maybe you should give it a try. Uh, the biggest little farm. I think uh, they ha it's on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the little, uh, the biggest little farm. I've seen it. It's, yeah. uh, it's a nice movie. It takes seven years to create a micro uh, microclimate. But it might give you some ideas. Uh, yes. Darren, I think they had the pretty much same issue as you, and you turned they it they turned it around, but it took it took a while. Yeah. But it takes time if you want to build a. Have a nice evening, any I still I my husband is probably waiting downstairs for me. Like, where are you? So I have like a couple minutes left. So I'm gonna try to read all your comments. Yep, we remove the manure and add sand manure into the compost. Compost into the garden. Uh, you should not buy worms. They are invasive. I read. Okay. All right. So I guess I have to educate myself now on worms. <laughs> I have to add that to the list. <laughs> I have plenty here, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, when I purchase my compost every single year, I have like boatloads of worms in it. And I they stay. They're always there. So I oh, guess yeah. they're, they're native to, to my area. Mm. Would you like to add anything else? Because I'm going to let you guys go. I had a long weekend. I'm tired. I don't know if you guys can see. I haven't been talking much and I'm struggling to find my words. I'm, oh, I need to sleep. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll go to bed. Soon. Yes, I guess everyone needs to go to bed. <laughs> uh, but Torhaven, just watch that in your soil for insects and other worms are good, but the others are good too. Good night, everyone. Okay, so I guess I'm going to thank you for coming and chatting with us tonight. I hope everyone learned a little bit of something. And um, I thank you, Remy, for actually joining me, even though you're tired. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. And thanks again, everyone, for popping in. And bye, everyone. Right, take care, guys. Take care. Girls.